we've got to make sure the Monty Python is correct. Right. Very important because yeah. we're loyal as fans, <laughs> and I consider exactly. myself loyal. And you don't get the originals, but we're doing our best to You're getting honor the spirit that. of it, and I love that. The lights are on. The curtains up. This is Steps to the Stage. Folks at home, do you have a business, small or otherwise, that isn't pulling in traffic the way you want it to? Well, it might be because they don't have something to remember you by. And that's why today we are sponsored by Graphic Details Inc. Signs and Displays. They will print out your banners, they'll cut vinyl, they'll do window graphics for the company cars. We're talking business cards, banner stands, LCD displays, tabletop displays, logos, all in full living color. Again, that is Graphic Details Inc. here in Chino, California. Thank you so much. Hello, and welcome to Steps to the Stage, where we talk to the community theater professionals and find out how they make the magic happen. My name's Kirk Lane. I'm going to be your host today, um, filling in for our very faithful Colin, who unfortunately had another commitment tonight. So hopefully I'll be able to live up to our wonderful host, and we're going to have a great discussion today. We're talking about spam a lot, and... Uh Right in front of me, I have the director, Mary Lee, and I have the Lady of the Lake, Gracie. So we're really excited about having you guys on for this particular episode, but we're really, well, let me say, I'm really excited <laughs> because I am a huge Monty Python fan, there and you go. Spam a Lot was actually the very first show that I saw on Broadway. Oh. So I'm so excited about hearing about this production, but I'm very excited about seeing it specifically. So without further ado, Marilee, why don't you introduce yourself, and, uh, and then we'll roll from there. Well, I am Marilee Drake, and um, I did not realize what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. But it truly filled in for me what it means to, it takes a village. Yes. Great. I, I have never seen anything like that or like this. We're doing with 17 people. What is normally done by at least 10 more. Right. And I think we're doing a great job. Absolutely. I think I think we have a, a tremendous... I'm Gracie, by the way. <laughs> Welcome, Gracie. Yes, of course. Thank you for having both of us. Of course. Yes. So excited to be here. But um, I would have to agree very much with what you said, because in this particular production, we have a very small ensemble that's taking over so many roles, not to mention that we have a support staff that has been there from the get-go. Uh, we have yes. wonderful people supporting us backstage, making sure that things are running as smoothly as they can. And I don't know, I just really feel like it's a very community effort and it's great. It's going very well. So let's go to the beginning. So Marilee, you're sitting at home and you go, I want to direct Spam a lot. Tell us about that process. Tell us what happened. Well, it was kind of, Gracie called me, and she's wanted to know if I was interested. But even before that, we have our play selection committee. And right. in our play selection committee, we really, really are looking for our titles or, you know, especially for the musical, we want something that will attract the audience that we think is in our part of our community. And so when we looked at Spamalot, well, the first thing that you have to do is you have to kind of envision what it would look like on the marquee. Right. That's the first thing. And then you say, <laughs> okay, well, can we do this? Is this feasible? What is the set like? What, what kind of, how many dancers do we need? Do we need a lot of money for the set? How are, what's the cost? Can budget? you do this on a community theater stage? Exactly. That's a pretty small stage. Correct. And yet Spamalot, made it all the way to the very, very end when we all decided to collectively vote on this for, for the season. Right. And so uh, along with the rest of the shows that we have in our season, I think Spamalot is going to do very, very well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's our 40th anniversary, it is. correct? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I know the Children's Theater just did uh, <laughs> What a Good Man, Charlie Brown, which I think was the very first uh, production that we've ever done in our theater. So it's great to see that the adult theater as well. And for those of you that have been listening to us for a while, you understand we have the two theaters. So, um, but they work together and they go back and forth. But it is our 40th anniversary. So we're really excited about celebrating that. So Spamalot gets chosen. Spamalot gets chosen. And then we have to find someone to direct it. Right. And now, originally, when it was submitted, Marilee was the one that submitted Spamalot. Am I right, Marilee? No. Uh, no, I had submitted Little Shop of Horrors. Right. Ah. I can't recall who actually did, but then 
Marilee, correct me if I'm not correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. We when we heard spam a lot, when we heard initially that yeah. it was going to be that, we all got very excited. Yeah. And then slowly but surely you start to um look at all the plays that everybody has sub- submitted and then you kind of start weeding out which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. But it made it to the very very end. And then we got to the process of picking a director. And Marilee had mentioned I think mentioned that would be early a lot of fun on. early on. That would be a lot of fun to direct. So I said to Marilee, let's meet and talk. And so part of my team is Chris Deal, the artistic right. director of the, the other one. There's two of us. And we had a conversation with Marilee and it was decided that that's, that's the direction that we would go. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> it, Chris, by the way, has been uh, on our show on many episodes. Yes. And we really love having a discussion with him, but Again, I went back to talking about how I really love Monty Python and Spamalot was the first. So the thing that would, if I were to be the director, I would be so intimidated because you need a specific Fair cast. Way. So talk to me a little bit about the whole casting process. <laughs> well, they're very um, ethnically diverse. Okay. We got something for everybody. Nice. And... um I know the first thing was we picked them to start with for their voice. Okay. If, uh, more than half the show was singing. So is, is sorry to interrupt. So is there a specific number on when this this particular production is chosen? What's the cast number like? What do they suggest? Did they give you a suggestion of the number of people you want? I or? believe it was twenty some. Twenty something. And what did we end up with? Seventeen. Seventeen. So you have people that are doing multiple different parts. Oh, very much so. And in the original production, the knights did several of those small parts. The knights that say me or the... No, the knights. <laughs> Arthur's knights. Sorry, Arthur's knights. Okay. And I have to interject here because when you look at the cast, we have old, young, um, oh, yeah. thin, you know, definitely nicely proportioned people. We just <laughs> have so many different types. But And when you look at them on stage, you think, how? How does this all work? How does this motley crew of people, (laughs) how do they fit together? And then the lights come on and they start singing. And as an audience member, just watching the rehearsals, watching the ensemble, it is joyful. It's so much fun to see all of them take on this different character all together. And, and, And collectively, they all look terrific. So, yes. Marilee, you were specifically looking at listening for the great voices. That was that was your first, so this is what I mean. that was my first concern. Then the acting, because it's comedy sketch, song, dance, a little more comedy, and off they go. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right. <laughs> because you're, and definitely, I was thinking all the time, We've got to make sure the Monty Python is correct. Right. Very important because yeah. we're loyal as fans. And I consider <laughs> exactly. myself loyal. And you don't get the originals, but we're doing our best to You're honor that. getting the that. spirit of it. And I love that. So how about, are you looking for English accents or did that was that a driving factor? Mm, it ended up not being. Okay. All we right. could have done that. But it would have given one more thing for them to work so hard at. Right. And already 17 people are learning all the lyrics, all the, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, There's hardly a... Gracie has the bulk of anything that's done solo. Okay. Yeah, that, I, that's very true. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm, I have quite a few solos. But the thing is, is that if I... When I look at the show, I'm not making any sense, but when I look at the show, I think the ensemble, that would be, that would be what you should really go for, at least yeah. in this show. If you, if you, if you really enjoy being a part of something, I mean, cause I'm watching them and I'm thinking, God, I wish I was in that number. That is so much fun. Look what they're doing. They're having so much, there's just joy everywhere. And so that's, that's what I like. I like seeing that. And yes, it's, it's just, and- Going real We've well. gone out of our way mm-hmm. to make sure it stayed like that. 
Now, with and I know you've done several uh, productions here before. Oh, I know yes. you've been a guest with us before. Um, this cast that you chose, have you worked with all of them before? No, they're <laughs> with the exception of maybe four people. They're all new to me. That's great. And I just went for it, you know. So who else do you have on your team as far as you're the director? Is there someone that's a musical director or do you yes. have? Tina you... Whitley is our musical director. Okay. And she has done a magical job. Yes. And Katie Morales is our choreographer. Right. And she, okay, great. She and she's has taken done great work. What talent, you know, the talent that the dancers have right now, the, the ensemble, right. what they have, and she's just made them flourish. And she's so positive. And so is Tina. They're both just wonderful people. Yeah. And I imagine they were all involved in the casting process? Yes. Great. So they gave you good direction on what they were looking oh, for specifically. Yes. And you, you guys knew as a group what was going to happen <laughs> yeah. there. That's fantastic. So you find your cast. This is a period piece. So talk to me about costuming. That had to be <laughs> um, quite the challenge here. Well, it is because it's not done in period. Okay. Or anywhere close to it. Okay. I mean, uh, Gracie can tell you her stuff is not even medieval. Okay. But we add lots of different pieces to, pieces to, to these, you know, these very pretty gowns that she has been wearing to make it make it work. And and Marilee has taken very good care of me as far as that goes. For the rest of the people, I heard someone say backstage the other day, I have 10 costume changes. <laughs> and I started laughing because I thought, I, I think we all do. I, you well, know, it's quite a bit. And that was not realized until we got down to the nitty gritty of looking at the budget and we went, I don't think so. Right. The, I need 110 costumes. Yeah. For 17 people. So you had to get pretty creative then. Well, we we rented part of them, thank God. Okay. Because it, it was just, we're making a couple of them. Um, I personally took care of Gracie because I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I'm very lucky. But yeah, they've been going to the dungeon, trying to find the yeah. dungeon, for those of you that don't know, is our Thank little you. area <laughs> where we keep some costumes that we've had for years. And yeah. um, we have two, well, several people, Karen Larson mostly, and, and um, right. that, that take care of that area so nicely yeah. for both theaters. And um, so we and have... Paul is doing the set. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And I met and had a discussion about it, and I told him basically what I needed, and he ran with it. That's great. Paul and Karen Larson that we've mentioned um, are our founders. Absolutely. And yep. uh, um, they are still very actively involved, um, as are their kids. They're very involved in theater as well and yes. even do some stuff here. Um, I know Mrs. Jesse definitely helps out with our uh, superstars group. So it's total it's, community. Yeah, it's so great <laughs> to you know know that the founders are still here 40 years later and they're still helping with this. Well, so. And along those lines, we've got, let's see, Chris, Nathan. Um, can you think of any? Where are you going with this? Um, who were members of the Children's Oh, yes. Oh, children's okay. Mm -hmm. And so came up. Through the children's theater. Oh, we love that. Uh, and that's, you know, that's one of the things obviously we're trying to do here at Steps of the Stage is make sure that we kind of leave a, a historical legacy for those that are going through and that can go back and listen to some of the different episodes we've had on the various different productions. But, yes. But love hearing that. And my kids are very involved. Um, in the theater, and one of them just graduated from Cal State Northridge with a theater production degree. Oh. And then oh, I have another one that's going to be going to uh, Cal State Long Beach uh, to do a theater performance. So, mm -hmm. um, and we were a big sports family before that. So, you know, <laughs> we, we came into this this wonderful theater and met people like Paul and Karen Larson and felt so welcomed. And now here we are all these years later, and we're still very involved, and the kids are actually, you know, going to school to do stuff like that. So, I mean, I think that's one of the things that we love, especially 
is. It's very much a community. I think you said it. It takes a village. It does. So we've talked about the casting. We've talked about the costumes. We've talked about... Let's go a little bit more into the set. So you went to Paul. Let's talk... Give me more about your direction, what you're trying to accomplish, because... You got a lot going on in Spam a lot, a lot. And, and and on a community theater stage, oh, that's, yeah. that's quite the effort to, to make that happen. So, Well, if you need high quality headshots or other professional photo work done, visit Zochi Neri Photography at fb.me slash x Neri Photos. What we've basically done is move what's generally center stage, which is the portcullis, which in the Broadway show, they dropped a screen in front of it, and projections were on that screen. Right, okay. We can't do that, so we have a curtain that pulls across, and the projections go on that. So you are using projections. Yes, we are. Indeed, we are. And those were done by Sage. Okay. And she... Just has worked magic. Yes, especially Fantastic. with our promotional items. Um, we have Sage on board with us, and she she's very creative and has taken taken the reins and yes, made sure yes. that um, she's trying to feature everyone so that people know that hey, come to the theater. Yeah. This is something that you could really enjoy. You know, f- as far as comedy and and just a really really done a great job. Especially for our opening weekend. Do you know about our opening weekend? What we have going on? I don't. I'd love to hear about it. So we open April 12th, and that's our gala. And so afterwards, after the show is over, people can come over backstage, and there's usually a nice spread of food for people to enjoy, and they can meet the actors and... It's just a really nice evening. The following night is a buy one, get one free. And this is all so that we can get the word out about what's happening at the theater. Right. And so all you have to do is call and make a reservation for that. And the ticket price would include yourself and another person. Okay. The following day, which is Sunday, the matinee, um, we have something called a talk back where if the audience is... You know, if the audience has any questions about, hey, how, how, who thought about that gag with, you know, this or that, whose, whose idea was that? Then that can be addressed by one of the cast members and the director will be there as well as, and it's just a really nice way for people who have those burning questions. Right. They can, they can answer them at that point. And Phil, who is doing the sound for the show. Okay. Phil Parker. Um, We'll be back for the talk back. Oh, good. Which he wasn't anticipating. He, he's a big NASCAR fan. Okay. So he's off to see NASCAR. Ah, got it. But he'll be back in time Wonderful. for, for the talk back. Yeah, so. and the enthusiasm that we've we've seen from oh. Phil, uh, he he's probably just as much a fan of Monty Python oh, as yes. you. <laughs> well, he and, and Tony has just made... A mammoth number, Tony Lind, okay. has made a mammoth number of phone calls for us, looking for people, you know, trying to get them out. Wonderful. And even with that, the people we got were not the ones we expected. Wonderful. But they were just, they're really precious. And I never get tired of looking at them, and they always make me feel better no matter better no matter what's going on that's so important especially with such a i mean this is uh this is something that there's a pretty significant audience out there that's aware of it you know through monty python yeah. but even if you're in the theater knowing about spam a lot and so you really need for a community theater and for a stage our size and and our theater you're going to need everyone on board and really helping out with that well, so that's great and, to hear that it's been it, such a good collaborative effort like um one of the laker girls is operating the killer rabbit. Okay. Yes. The the vorpal bunny, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the big teeth. Yeah. And um Jack, who Friedman, who did our props, okay. Uh, uh, ended up buying a pair of Spamalot bunny slippers. Okay. And that's what he made the puppets out of. I love it. I love it. So I have to ask, being a a Python fan, there's a very important prop 
that is utilized in the movie and has mm-hmm. been utilized in Spam a lot. So I, I need to know, did we have our coconuts flown in from Africa <laughs> or European swallows? Where, what well, was no, used they, to they fly in the coconut? They were brought by swallows. They were brought by swallows. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, <laughs> yes I don't think you could have a, you could, couldn't have a production of Spam a lot without, oh, without no. coconuts. <laughs> and, oh, no. We maybe not in where you would expect it, but we we have a whole dance number that's tapped with coconuts. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, so you talked about some of your tech people. Who's stage managing for? I believe it's your daughter. My daughter, meaning <laughs> Marley. Marley. Okay. Well, I love that. Not so, Abby. Not Abby, but Marley. Well, wonderful to and hear. So fantastic. I'm thrilled. Abby or Marley helped us out on Thuddy Mirrors. Okay, wonderful, year. wonderful. Well, I'm a little biased, so I know you'll have a, a great stage. Well, I know for we you. will. And it's going to be important, I think, because it sounds like you have quite a few changes and things going on, not only from a costume perspective, yeah. I imagine on stage as well. Well, we're trying to make it so the cast gets it on and off. Yeah. But there are a couple places. And I discovered one last night. There was what we were going to have was a tree stump, but it's in the way. Got it. A lot of the time. Got it. So instead, I'm going to have her bring out a gold wooden stool. Okay. With a purple put cushion on it. Yeah. With big tassels. Yes, that that'll work. And That's what just we do. Bring it out when improvise. Arthur needs to sit. <laughs> And put it in place for him and come and take it away afterwards. So that's just a great thing that you discussed here is is in, in theater in general, but specifically in our theater. You really have to improvise and you oh, just have oh, to you, you figure out how are you going to be so creative. But I, I do really appreciate the productions that we put on here. And I think we do such a great job on all levels, yeah. not only the sets, but obviously the costumes and the technology. What about lighting? Is there someone you're working with specifically on lighting? And uh, I'm a tech guy, so I like to know <laughs> all, all that inside stuff. Well, um, Ellie will be running the lights. Okay. And she played the lady with the stroke talk. Got it. Right, Funny from Mears. Funny Mirrors, yes. And um, and is somebody helping you with the the lighting design, or do you have a kind of general feel or look that you're going for? Or? I'm not sure. I yes, we do. We want to light the stage like when when Gracie first comes out. Got it. With lake effects. Got it. And the projection is just beautiful with blossoms. Wonderful. So it'll be important Float. to have that yeah. combination of a good lighting mm-hmm. design along with the projections. So, And once this lady opens her mouth, it's just magic. Well, I've had the pleasure of actually performing alongside Gracie. And we <laughs> did a number you. together in Mamma Mia many years ago. Yes. Um, which I had a great memory because our one of our local high schools actually um, put on the production. And Abby, my other daughter, who you had mentioned, yes. was playing the same role that you played. She was playing Donna. She was playing oh, Donna. So um, and that was just a few weeks ago. But it brought back so many great memories of when I was had the great opportunity to be a part of that cast, which was actually the first uh, act. Acting first show yes. production that he, I'd ever been. He was been very in. good. In fact, I was hoping that you would audition for this. I but wanted I to know so very, bad, very but oh, you work has wonderful. got me busy. So you know, traveling <laughs> all over the place. So yes, I was really bummed when I saw the dates, and and I already had a couple shows that were, but um, but I had great memories, and so I know when you were cast, I was like, you guys are in great hands because not only you're a phenomenal actress, but you're an amazing singer as well. So well, I'm glad to much. hear that. Thank so. you. Thank you. I. Um, I always think how I always feel so blessed being able to just have a theater that is literally down the street from where I live. I mean, many of the things that I have in my life are positioned in such a way where I can walk to every single one of them. Yeah. But to f- have come here, what, 29 years ago and having done West Side Story as one of the, one of the I think I was Rosalia, I remember coming here and I remember thinking, well, I wonder if this is where... This is where I'll do my work, you know, as as I had worked professionally before. And when I moved back home, I thought, well, perhaps I'll make my, my roots here. And sure enough, this theater has afforded me the roles 
so many wonderful, I don't know how many times I've been married. I don't know how many times <laughs> I've, you know, helped somebody out or just, you know, figured something out. And it's been so therapeutic. But uh, above and beyond everything, um, I've met some of the best people. Yes. In my life, my best friend. I will um, agree Many with people that. that I... I turn to in times of, you know, in times of good times and in bad. So um, I feel very, very lucky to have had that. Well, I think definitely 7th Street puts the community in community theater. Mm -hmm. And I know that everyone that's involved in, in a variety of these different productions, you know, they act, they work backstage, they direct, they help with costumes. I, I think that's the beautiful thing that I've really enjoyed about becoming a part of the 7th Street uh, uh, community theater family is that there's something for everyone, uh -huh. right? If you yes. don't want to be on stage, there's tons of things that you can do. And I love that they have uh, not only beyond that, but we do a lot of community outreach. We do camps. And we do so much here. So, but back to spam a lot. So Gracie, tell me, what was your, were you a Monty Python fan or just kind of on the... Kind of, a okay. little bit on, uh, just a little bit. I, I've always appreciated, you know, knowing about these these men that, that do this Monty Python, but... When I when I found out that we were going to do Spam a lot, I thought I I like to I like the I like the music so much, and I thought the music was so clever, and um and I thought that the Lady of the Lake was just she's just a hoot. Yes, there's not very many chances that a person a singer. Um, can get the opportunity to sing so many different styles uh, yes. in in Spamalot, and that's exactly what the Lady of the Lake is uh, offers to the to the audience. She sings pop. She sings gospel she sings rock she sings you know jazz everything and for me that's a great challenge and a great opportunity so um very very excited about it that's great mm -hmm. and it has to be funny through the entire thing <laughs> yeah uh, and, and on top of yeah obviously you're going to have some challenging songs but you got to keep the humor going and yes. that's really important yes. and that's one thing that i remember about seeing the actual production on broadway you know and obviously knowing Monty Python, but I, I loved that they, they kept the spirit of it. It's not a exact replica, as it were, of the yeah. Holy Grail. Like it definitely it incorporates some of the other Monty Python, Life of Brian, and some yes, of the other yes. jokes that yeah, are in huh? there and some of the other lines. So that's what I really appreciated about it as well. But, you know, being a Monty Python fan, but also being a theater fan, like we're in heaven right now, right? Because <laughs> we get we get the best of both worlds. So, yeah. so that's got to be fantastic putting together a production like this. So you talked about your opening weekend. Tell me the dates on that again so that we can let the audience know. We're going to have it in our show notes as well. So the opening night is... April 12th. April 12th. And that's the night that's going gala. to be the gala. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so everyone that comes to the actual... Can uh, come and stay afterwards and have fantastic. a treat with us. And have food. And yes, I've been to a couple galas before, so that's that's great. I then love that. Then the following night that. is uh, the buy one, get one. Right. And that's on April 13th. April 13th. And on April 14th, which is the Sunday matinee, we have the, the talk back. Back. Talk back. With the Which cast. we all love. And then how many weekends do we run? I believe it runs until the April, April 28th. April, April 28th. Yes. And then, so if somebody wants tickets, what's the best way to acquire tickets? Well, the best way is to call 909-590-1149. Call <laughs> You can oh, call there. And I think there's probably some advertisements that, and some information um, where you can do a go seat yourself as well on um, on Facebook or maybe maybe even on Instagram as well. Yes, the yeah, website and, itself. And we typically put the link to the tickets as well mm -hmm. in, in our show notes. So for those of you that are listening, you could probably right. check that. Yes. Uh, but obviously you can go to the website or the different social media um, outlets that we have because I know that we're very active on both uh, Facebook, Instagram. And so uh, the, 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 the fans out there, the Monty Python fans, we need you to come on out. <laughs> oh, we and do. And we need you to sell out every show. But I've heard when we were talking a little bit earlier – Ticket sales are going pretty good. They are, and and so that's great news. However, we don't, you don't want to sit on it, you know. And and really, I think our ticket prices are very reasonable, considering oh, the fact wait. that you can go to a movie and pay equally the same amount. And here, you're watching something live. There's nothing, nothing like it. I mean, someone could forget everything, or somebody can turn brilliant all of a sudden and do something that makes the audience just come on, come on along with with them on a ride. It's just, it. That's the beauty of 
live theater is that you just never know what's going to happen. I agree completely. And the one thing that I also have <laughs> really, in, in, in the few years that I've been here, I guess I've been here for a bit now, but I've actually seen several people that have been on our stage that have gone on and, and performed on Broadway and have done stuff in regional theater. And so it's great to see that we have such talent that's in our immediate area, but that they can come and they can perform on this stage, but who knows, you may be seeing the next Broadway star coming up, coming out to see Spam a lot. So who knows? <laughs> well, so. Gracie and I actually yes. were in a show together when she was 14. Oh my goodness. But yes. Yeah. I've known Marilee for, for, since I was 14 and I was sister Agatha and she was the Baroness in Sound of Music. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I just For wasn't... Elisa Allen's um, Carousel Kids. Actors Repertory Theater. Right? Yeah. And I just was a little squirt. And I just remembered looking at Mary Lee thinking, oh, my God, she's beautiful. Look at her go. Look at this woman. I, I, I was enchanted by the whole thing. Well, I think. bless your heart. <laughs> Well, it's so great to have you both here, and we thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time to tell us a little bit about this. Absolutely. What we know is going to be an amazing production. So, yes, everyone, please come out. Um, Please tell your friends. Please enjoy this. And you know what? We have a full slate of shows all year long. So, of course, we want you to come to Spamalot, but come and support both the Children's Theater and the Adults Theater. And just support community theater, support your high schools, support live events support live music so thank you so much you guys thank you best of luck on your production and we really appreciate your time here today thank you very much (laughs) if you need insurance vince will work for you vince polito is a local farmer's insurance agent who wants to help you out auto home renters and more open eight to five on all weekdays over 35 years experience and licensed in four states call now Thanks for listening to Steps to the Stage, and now it's time for the curtain call. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple, Google, or any podcasting platform. We have videos up on YouTube, and you can visit our website at stepstothestage.buzzsprout.com. And as always, a special thank you to our audio engineer, Joey Rice, and our producer, Kirk Lane. Without the two of you, this show would not be possible.